Friends, muchachos, buenas tardes. Buenas, by the way, with an A. That's something that my viewers kept correcting me on. <laughs> es muy importante que sabes, los tardes no son hombres, son mujeres. Well, to that I can only say perdón, but I think I agree. If a beautiful sunset had a set of genitals, it would obviously be a gooch. Maybe even a nice set of patatas bravas. But you guys knew that if I was going to do a series of videos um, on underused characters that I want to recommend to people, I was eventually going to get to Miguel, but I kind of didn't want to make this video because making it turns me into a hypocrite, something that I try not to be on the channel. What I mean is Miguel is my most played character in this game. I have something ridiculous like 2000 plus wins on my main account. It's basically the character I use to teach myself how to play Tekken 7. But then I started using him less and less and about halfway through season two, I dropped the character altogether. So how am I gonna tell other people they should play Miguel when I don't have the balls to do it myself? How can I expect fire and bravery to live in the hearts of my viewers when my own is filled with nothing but bitch juice and wet noodles? Well, maybe we can use that as a topic for this video. Maybe we can talk about why I think this character is uniquely frustrating to play. Remember, we finally got good buffs for Eliza and Harada said that those were what 30 to uh, a third to a fourth of the total changes on the way. So there are more changes on the way and I'm going to be stupid and get my hopes up again. I'm going to expect that there are Miguel changes in the future and I want to keep on communicating what needs to be changed about the character because it seems that they actually do listen at least to an extent. So. I want to start by saying that I'm definitely not a player who shies away from playing weak characters or low tier characters. And there's proof in that pudding. If you go back and look at my history of the characters that I play, um, I tend to gravitate towards weaker characters. And that's because I feel it gives me a bigger opportunity to express myself as a player when I'm not doing the same thing as everybody else. Uh, I'm a hipster in that sense. So my issue with Miguel is definitely not that he's not super good. So what is it? Well, maybe we'll get to it. But first of all, in summary, what are the issues? Why is the cons uh, character considered not to be very good? He has two main issues. Uh, in my opinion, he has an issue with range and he has an issue with safety. And then he has two different play styles that he can dip into, but he manages to excel and specialize in uh, neither. So if we start with the range, I mean, it's a famous meme in the Tekken community at this point, but your jab range is very bad with this character on, for example, your 1-2 and your 2-1. And that's bad because these are your fast block punishers and your fast block punishers are your important block punishers. It's the one ones that you actually use because good players don't really use a lot of moves that are minus 13, 14, 15, but they do sometimes use moves that are minus 10 which means that you get to jab them. And that's why it's very important to have good stuff for your jabs. Uh, yours are just kind of lackluster overall, but the range is the main issue. It's also really bad because jabs are uh, important tools for other reasons. You can run and open up offense with them. You can check the opponent and make them stand still. But if you run in on an opponent who is back dashing with Miguel and you try and jab them more often than not, you're hitting nothing but open air and then maybe you get launch punished and now you feel like a bit of an asshole. I also mentioned uh, an issue with safety. So there's this dichotomy in Tekken where a lot of the time, especially with strings, you have a duckable high option and then you have a mid option that can't be ducked, but it's punishable on block very common. You see it on almost all characters, I think. But with Miguel, that dichotomy comes to define his entire move list. You very rarely get to not be either duckable or punishable with this character. You usually have to choose uh, one or the other. So for example, this down forward one string, uh, this is the uh, down forward one one, it's the duckable version. Down forward one two is the uh, punishable version. But there are other examples. Uh, his gap closers, for example, forward forward two one, that's the duckable version, forward forward two two, that's the punishable version. There are many characters in this game who can do moves that are neither punishable nor duckable. In fact, that are plus on block and they can rotate those moves until they get a hit and then capitalize with massive, massive damage and run away with the round. But you have to expose yourself to constant risk with Miguel because when you are mixing them up with these strings, you are also mixing up yourself. And this is where the main frustration I have with Miguel starts to come into the picture. When I played him, I usually felt like uh, I was winning only because my opponent was making mistakes. And that made me feel like I was getting lucky. So I was being frustrated when I lost, of course, 
because it's always frustrating to lose. But then it was frustrating when I was winning as well because I felt like I got away with murder. For example, this move connects to the wall. I do a massive wall combo and I take the round. Well, if the opponent could have ducked that and then launched me and taken the round, then, you know, is, was I doing something uh, skillful or did I gamble and it just worked out in my favor? Uh, do you know what I mean? There are more examples. This string, I love this string. This is a very powerful counter hit move with the character because, well, if the first hit counters, you get the whole thing natural, 53 damage, and it feels great. And then, you know, you go uh, maybe straight into a one plus two throw and you hold four to lean into Savage, and then you do one of your new massive uh, wall bounce moves. And it's just sex, and it feels really great, and it's super cool. But uh, the final hit of this is a, a safe mid that they cannot punish, but the middle hit, if they're fast, they can actually duck because it's a high, see? And so you can fish for counter hits with this, and you can get away with murder, but eventually you're gonna run into somebody who's fast enough, they're gonna duck that, and then you're gonna feel like an asshole, and it's gonna make all those other wins where you were getting away with this move feel cheaper which isn't a great feeling, you know? It feels like it's difficult to play well with the character. Let's get back to those two play styles that you have with the character uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the main one is like close range brawling. I think this is uh, the main way this character should be played. It's how I played him um, before I dropped him because it was the least frustrating way to play him. But if you're up here, it's not like you have amazing unfair tools that um, just stand out when compared to other characters. Your ja uh, your down forward one string is very important. Uh, a lot of your stuff rotates around this thing, but it's actually just kind of average when you compare it to most other characters. You don't have great range on this down forward one that framed it as average. The extensions, like I said, that, that one's duckable. The other one's uh, punishable. It's not amazing at all. Uh, your jab strings are bad. You have a fast counter hit move. Um, very, very fast high right here, but it's got bad range. Same issues as all of his punching attacks. And again, there are other characters who have the exact same thing. For low pokes, I mean, the main low poke you have that will crush highs is down three. This is a good move, but this is 21 frames to impact. That's very slow uh, for a low poke. It's almost in the seeable range. And then you have other good low pokes, but they won't uh, crush highs. So you see, it's not like you get uh, unfair, amazing stuff when you're up here. The other thing you can do with Miguel uh, is, of course, that you can move. They've given you a good backdash. He really travels when he backdashes. One of the best in the game. It's almost Zafina level good. It's amazing. But when you do that, what you want with your character then is good whiff punishment. You want to be ab able to capitalize on mistakes. Well, you don't really have good whiff punishment either because this thing has short range uh, and it's very, it's not short, but it's not great either. And it's very launch punishable. It's also pretty slow at 16. The hop kick isn't amazing for range. Um, and so you actually expose yourself to the risk of whiffing or getting launched punished when you get this blocked, when you're trying to whiff punish with the character. Uh, I was on a podcast with Sefi Black, one of the best Miguel players in the world. And because this is a thing on my mind, I asked him like, when you're moving around with Miguel and you see a whiff, what do you go for for the whiff punish? Do you use Cyclone Slap? Because you can obviously use Cyclone Slap. Um, kind of slow to impact, I think 17, let's double check. Okay, at least I still remember my frame data. Uh, but it's got good range and homing properties. It's mid um, and it's natural. But it's 35 damage and a knockdown where some characters can get, you know, death combos <laughs> when they see a whiff when they're moving. Um, so he said, yeah, I use Cyclone Slap, but I also use Ford 1 plus 2, the shove. Um, and that's something that I hadn't used or thought about as a whiff punisher. It was very interesting because he's right. You should probably use it because look at the down for 2. It's going to whiff from about here. Uh, the hop kick, the 3-4, which is another like natural string you have for damage. But the shove actually has really respectable range. And you get these guaranteed follow-ups. Sh uh, this other shove for 42 or a bull charge for the same damage. That's 42. It's pretty decent. 14 frames to impact. But again, consider Zafina, right? For 13 frames, you have the down for 3-4. It's mid. It's got even more range than this. It leads to 49 damage, which is more. And it gives spectacular Oki. That's like a fast, great whiff punisher, you know? And so I think he's lacking in that department as well. So like, should I move? Should I go in? What should I do? You know, should I try and close the gap and expose myself to risk? Uh, it's really difficult uh, to know. And then I started thinking about all the analogs for moves that uh, exist on other characters with Miguel. And I realized that he's basically at this point, bad fucking wrong. <laughs> because if you consider range, I mean, Miguel has crappy range, 
Fuck Ram has like the best range in the game. His range is amazing on like everything he has, including his jabs. His jab string is great. Miguel's supposed to specialize in this down forward one string, but again, Fuck Ram has a better down forward one string. Miguel's hatchet kick is good, but it's locked to a stance. Uh, Fuck Ram's isn't, so it's a better hatchet kick. I think he has better faster low pokes, better range, better counter hit tools because Miguel, uh, he has a couple of decent counter tools, but he doesn't have a single one that's mid. Fuck Ram definitely does. He can stick that tentacle out and counter hit you from across the globe. Uh, damage, I mean, Miguel has really high damage. Fuck Ram manages to have even better damage. His slash kick is basically a faster, more oppressive version of Miguel's slash kick. He's more dangerous at the wall. Full crouch mix up. He has a hell sweep that's like super dangerous and fast. Miguel has this thing, and yeah, it's good. You get a big follow up for high damage, but this is slow to impact. I think 22. Yeah, 22. So it's in the seeable range and very launch punishable. Again, you expose yourself to constant risk. Consider this down forward one, or sorry, down back one that's supposed to be like your big knockdown threatening low that you use for mix ups. That would be great if it wasn't so slow that it's uh, seeable every time and launch punishable. Compare that with Falling Leaf, compare that with Demo Man, compare that with other moves in that category, and you see that most of those characters have those risky lows, but they get to be non seeable or unseeable, whereas Miguel doesn't. Um, and I also thought about wall game, this thing, this thing used to be great. They've nerfed it. It's launch punishable on block at minus 15. So you knock the opponent down at the wall. Maybe you spike them with this and you can do this because it hits them on the ground. But if they get up and it connects somehow, then you re wall splat them. This is like I said, minus 15 and launch punishable. Go to Josie. She has the exact same move with the exact same notation and it's minus 13 and minus 13 and minus 15 is a big difference and then consider like steel pedal moves for mishimas like devil jin and kazia those don't re wall splat but they have counter hit launch properties uh they're really solid uh and they're safe on block i think at minus nine so yeah you can just play this game of searching for miguel moves uh better versions of miguel moves on other characters and i i'm kind of sad about fucking rum at this point because i just feel like they took a lot of the ideas um uh, uh, surrounding Miguel and made something better, more dramatic, and at this point, uh, much more popular. I have to say that I would, uh, if I could choose between having fucking Ram in the game or having a good version of Miguel in the game, I would take the good version of Miguel any day. I would sacrifice anything for that. I'd give half my liver and a testicle for this character to be buffed because he just matters so much to me. And I'm sorry that I'm sounding negative in this video, but this is just how I genuinely feel about the character. When balance changes come up for this game, even though I haven't played the character for months and months, and I basically main Elisa and Zafina exclusively now, I go and look at Miguel changes first because that's what I'm most interested in. If this character becomes like very rewarding to play and some of these frustrations of mine go away, then this is what I want to play. If I was going to get a tattoo on my body of a Tekken character, even though like a demon girl like uh, Elisa might seem a little bit more typical for a tattoo, I'd get Miguel. Like my back tattoo would be Miguel every day. Um, so yeah, I really do care. And, and why do I care? Because the character is amazing. This is one of the most fun looking sounding feeling move lists in the game i love the flavor of miguel playing him is like good wine and cheese if it weren't for these like pet peeves of mine that just pile up you know amazing stance savage is a good stance good big diverse stance uh, real mix-ups out of it i mean when these counter hit moves connect it's like uh, it just feels so good so uh, yeah i love this character and i do want to recommend him to people but i also uh, I couldn't just make a video talking about, yeah, you should play Miguel because he's awesome, because then the question becomes, well, why don't you play him then? Uh, because you used to, you know what I mean? And I know that my viewers want me to play him more because, you know, I, I made Miguel videos and my, and my channel got popular. So the Miguel players are probably subscribed to my channel and come here for content on him. And so, yeah, I am really sad about this. I will play him regardless. I will, I always get back to Miguel eventually. I rotate around, go to a couple of different characters and I always come back to him, but then I move on again because I remember uh, that strange feeling of feeling like I get lucky every time I win with him. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Uh, if it does, let me know. If you do play this character and you are seeing a lot of success with him, then that's awesome. Uh, please teach me how <laughs> how you get around the frustrations of, of playing this character. But yeah, I think it's just uh, unfair and I think it's, it's time for uh, serious buffs. He's gotten a couple. His wall bounce moves are good now. This move is good. 
and this move is good. He has good wall bounce stuff, definitely. Uh, the Savage 1 4, that is. That's great. Uh, the nerf to the Savage down back 3 is a really frustrating thing. The fact that this mix up is not uninterruptible anymore, I think that's pretty big, especially at a high level. Oh, your down jabs are shitty as well. I forgot to mention. All your jabs are, are pretty shitty. Uh, but amazing character to play. I mean, so, so much fun if you can if you can stomach it. Um, so, I will play him this week. I will see what happens. I, I will see if I can find some space for myself in my mind and my heart uh, to make it work. And if it doesn't, then yeah, we're going to be looking out for more buffs. Hopefully, they are on uh, the way. Thank you so much for watching this short video on Miguel. Uh, I know it was a little bit strange uh, compared to the other ones, but this is how I decided to do it. And I hope that made sense. Thank you so very much. I'll see you guys again very soon.